Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my channel. I'm just saying though, I'm just saying though, today I wanted to talk about racism and how it is something that is taught and learned from somewhere, maybe at home. I'm going to tell you about an incident that happened to me when I was either in uh, fourth grade, fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. For you guys that don't know, which is most of y'all, I grew up in um, in Alabama. I, I still live in Alabama. After I came out the military, I, I wanted to move back to Alabama. Um, but anyways, um, as a young black girl growing up in Alabama, there are a lot of things that they don't teach us in school. And I find it interesting always whenever I hear a lot of um journalists say history will not be kind to the kind to the president or history won't be kind to these people and yeah uh, they will be um because if you live in a particular state there are things that they're not teaching children in school so there are things that we never know or they make it seem so small that it's not a big deal Anyway, I digress, and I'm going to get to my story. All of this is true, and it's just something that I just want y'all to think about. Um, whenever I was in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade, I'm not exactly sure. At the time, um, Martin Luther King's birthday was not a national holiday, and we didn't know anything about Martin Luther King. Again, I was in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. And I love school. And every year up until those grades, I had always got perfect attendance. Therefore, I, I did not want to miss a day of school. And I remember um, one year, my mom, she said, you guys, y'all don't have to go to school today. We got up to go to school. And she said, you guys, y'all don't have to go to school today. I was like, why? And she was like, well, y'all don't have to unless y'all really want to. And of course... I wanted to go to school because I did. I had got perfect attendance, and I like getting that perfect attendance um, certificate at the end of the school year. And so I was excited about going to school. I still wanted to go, and um, I didn't know. Again, I was young. I didn't know who Martin Luther King was, and I remember Mom talking to some people out in the yard the day before, asking where they're going to send their kids to school, and. Um, some of them said yeah, some said no. So my mom asked us did we want to go to school and we all wanted to go to school, me and my sister and my brother. And so we get on a school bus and we go to school and it's like me, my sister, and my brother and like two other black people that go to school that day because our bus is the only bus that carries black people to school. So when we get to school, um, and I should tell you today my school, White House Fort School, White House Fort School elementary school so when we get to school um I'm the only black person in my classroom and up until then it had I I probably had about five or six other black children in my classroom and this was the 1980s so it really wasn't that long ago and in retrospect but anyways um I remember going to school and it was an odd feeling at the school and when finally, you know, we had our regular classes and then we had PE or, or no, we had recess. And I have or had at the time hung out with both black and white children. And I didn't think anything of it because I was not raised to not like somebody because of the color of their skin. But anyways, it was people that I had played with since I was in kindergarten and here I am let's just say I was in fifth grade and here I am playing with trying to play with the same children that I had played with all these years from kindergarten until fifth grade and um one guy um he says why did you come to school today he said don't you know um this is white house fork not black house fork why did you in you know using the n-word come to school this is again this is white house for it and it just kind of caught me off guard because i'm like wow 
This is a person that I talked to and has played with since kindergarten. Now they're looking at me as if I'm the enemy. And the rest of that day, neither one of us played with each other because suddenly they didn't like me. And so I found that like extremely perplexing because we hadn't learned anything about slavery, Martin Luther King or anything. All I knew is that the a person that I had played with, several people that I had played with, suddenly decided today is a day that they don't need to play with me because this is White House Fork and not Black House Fork. And so um, what was really <laughs> perplexing to me is the next day when I came back to school, uh, those same people that shunned me were acting as if nothing had happened and we played the rest of the year school year as if everything was just fine but first I knew that thought that stayed in the back of my head because for one I'm talking about it now but the next year whenever it was time to stay home because it was still not a national holiday for Martin Luther King I did not go to school I remembered how I felt being at school and I could care less about getting that perfect attendance uh, certificate the moral of the story is they learn that hate from at home because it never crossed my mind to not like somebody because of the color of their skin. And it was very perplexing to a young person's mind. How could someone play with me for four, five, six years and on a one particular day that I had done nothing, nothing in my life had changed. And they decided, hey, this is White House Fork and not Black House Fork, N-word. And then after that, everything was fine, as if that day never happened. So that tells me that, you know, racism is taught. Children don't just naturally not like somebody because of the color of their skin. They're taught that. We need to stop teaching people that there's a difference between white and black. When we die, we all still go in the ground. Yeah, But... Yeah, they treat people differently while they're alive. But you guys, I, that thought stays in my head a lot. And even though I live in Alabama still, um, that that's, that's still, I, I see a lot of that even today. You can see people that have been friends their whole lives. And then something that <laughs> they have been taught, it, it kind of, you know, comes into somebody's mind when, whenever something bad happens or something crazy happened, if something goes missing, that part of them that's been taught that black people are thieves or whatever bad that they have been taught their whole lives, that's the first person that they look at for something for them to say, you took this from me, even though they misplaced it. Later on, they find out they misplaced it. But it's that part of them that just believes the negative that they have been taught their whole lives. So I just wanted to tell that story. You guys teach your children love, no matter what color of the skin, no matter what no matter what walks of life. You there are some things you can't control. And one of the main things you can't control is the color of your skin. You are born that way. All right. <laughs> It's just a story that I remember, and I felt it necessary to talk about it today. All right, guys, that's all I have to talk about today. You guys, if you haven't done so, hit the like button and subscribe and tell other people about this channel. I do appreciate all of you guys for watching, liking, and telling other people. Please continue to do so. I thank you for your support, and I'm out.